All right, so welcome to episode three of Level Design with Seth. Uh, today, we're going to be a little bit more casual. I'm kind of tired, so hopefully I can still bring some cool content. But um, in the previous episodes, we covered a few different things. Um, first was how to get started. And then we started working on a new map and coming up with a layout. And we talked about a few different things along the way. Um, now that we actually have like a very rough layout that we kind of like, um, today we're gonna look at gathering some reference art so that we have some sort of visual aid to kind of go by in order to come up with some pretty looking stuff. Um, we do know from um, that we're doing some Japanese stuff, so it's gonna be pretty easy to do this because one thing that just happened recently on ArtStation is they had a um, contest uh, in the Japanese art department, and I thought about joining it last year, but in the end, I decided not to uh, pass challenges. So what I'm going to do is we're going to start just with this part here. I'm going to actually go to the actual environment art, the ones that are not concept arts, because this is a little bit more realistic to what we could potentially do, where some paintings can be a little bit um, advanced. So we're just going to look at reference art in general and just kind of like scroll through a bunch of this stuff just to find things that I can build off of. So let's look at the first, second, and third place here and see what kind of stuff we have. So this is more forest. This doesn't really fit what we're doing. We're kind of more mountainside and just like generic buildings. So while this is a, I really like this photo. While this, these are pretty cool, this doesn't fit what we're doing. Um, the second place though is actually kind of, it's even got a little video. This one's actually a little bit better. It's got, some structures that we can work off of. Um, oh, they even got just like generic assets to look at. So this one actually is kind of cool. What I'll probably do is save these to the desktop real quick. Um, so we'll just throw that there. And so when gathering reference art, I, I would say, you know, Kind of just grab whatever like tugs at you like in terms of visuals there's nothing really too important and i would say grab as much reference art as you can that um that you like in general just so that you can have a lot of ideas to come off of so uh let's see what else we got some honorable mentions i actually kind of like this one this one's kind of cool but maybe still a little detailed yeah. Um, but nothing special at first, but this one is actually really cool. Actually, I really like this one. That's a really cool photo. But a little too busy for what we're doing. Ours is a little bit more basic. Oh, here's a good one. I actually like this one a lot. I kind of like, yeah, I actually like this one too. It's also kind of cool because it's kind of got... I, I think this is the time of day that I want to go for, too. And this has got some good interior. I actually, I actually kind of like some of these. We don't have a lot of interior spaces on our map, but it's still good to try and find things that will kind of fit your style. So we're going to go with this one here and this one here. This, that one actually kind of has some cool stuff. Things that I'm, oh, I guess I should go over things that I'm looking for when I'm looking for these things. So because this is Halo oriented and we know this is going to go in Halo, we know that there's a few limitations that we talked about previously. Uh, so when I'm looking at, when I, when I see something like, like something like this piece right here, let's just click on it and make it large. Like this piece in the upper right right here, like, this is a cool piece, but is it makeable in Forge? And actually this piece is. So like, this is a pretty cool piece that is used a lot in Japanese, you know, architecture. Um, and I also really like 
this particular one because the walls are actually pretty simple. So I actually like this one too. And it's a lot of outdoor, like because most, most of my map is actually gonna be outdoors. If we look at the sketch up real quick, we have this one interior building right here, but then we have all these other, you know, like this is gonna be a building, you know, this is gonna be a courtyard. So I'm actually looking for photos that kind of have, you know, some buildings that you can see from the outside and some courtyards. So like, for example, here's some buildings outside and, you know, some courtyards. So I would just say, you would just need to dissect kind of what your map looks like or what you want it to look like and just find art accordingly. You know, even things like this is actually pretty good because you can actually see like these walls um, are actually slanted, which is actually pretty cool. Um, these, now to do this in Forge will require two additional pieces to make the bend. It's not just, you know, one flat piece and one flat piece that makes a perfect, you actually have to use two more pieces to get this kind of angled curve going on. So um, these roofs are probably a little too complicated, but we could do something that's pretty close to them. I actually kind of like this photo too, it's just to have as like general reference to uh, architecture. So we're gonna put that one off to the side too. So sucky thing is it keeps throwing me back to the top. Ooh, this one's got some cool lighting. Let's just look at it for the sake of looking at it. Some of the part, like it, like if in terms of this photo, it's got some cool lighting, but some areas are hard to see. Kind of loses the detail, so that there's nothing really here to pull out for me. Um, let's see what other things. Ooh, ooh, I I like pink. Fl I like pink trees. <laughs> it's funny i say i like pink trees and i'll show you something that i worked on recently i actually i wonder if i want to try and incorporate a bridge somewhere in the map uh what time of day were you thinking for this map yeah that you know i definitely want it either early morning or or, or evening I, I do want some sunlight so i want to be able to cast shadows um I do want shadows on the map. I don't want it to be cold or anything. I don't want it to be too cold so that there's no shadows and like it's completely sunless. But I definitely, because we're in the mountains, I definitely want it to be cooler, but not cloudy. So I'm, I'm going for partially cloudy with a little bit of orange inside of a cold setting. It's gonna be a little weird, that's for sure, but um, I got to think, you know, even like partially cloudy in the mountains, like for example, this is a, this is like really cloudy in the mountains. Like you're, you're obviously in the mountains, but you don't see any sun, but you get, you get some warmth right here on like this walkway. So I kind of, like, I kind of like this setting here. Um, this one that I saved earlier, I think this one's a little too, um, too close to uh, nighttime. Um, like it's a little too, it's not cloudy enough. So there's a little too much um warmth in this one i wanted a little bit cooler than this so but maybe not quite as cold as this so somewhere between these two um again here's those angled walls they so one thing i'm noticing now is that the houses that are made they tend to sit on top of the angled walls um so that's interesting and even and then they like, actually i like this photo there's a lot of cool things in here this base here is a good good thing to think about uh some detail ideas about the wall so i actually kind of like this one so we're gonna save that too uh this is actually um surprisingly th this actually is pretty useful for something on my map actually um this whole uh left side is actually actually brings me to a good point and i'll cover that in just a second but this left side is like everything from where this cylinder is here all the way up and around is gonna be a lot of natural geometry. Um, up in this wall here is gonna be all rock face. And one thing I like is like the stairs here inside of, now granted I'll have a building here on the right, um, but eh, maybe there's not enough there to really save, but it, it does bring good attention to something. Um, asset pieces, asset con construction, la da 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 da. But it's funny. I immediately clicked on this photo because it had pink trees, and to say that I'm not uh, a fan of pink trees, 
I made this one here for this particular photo, this pink tree, and it's like, yeah, I like pink trees. <laughs> uh, let's go back to uh, the challenges. But um, there is a, a particular subject that I wanted to talk about, and that's uh, iteration or reiteration about on your design. Now for this series, I've not been, I've talked about it a few times along the way. It's like, hey, the more times you repeat the step, the more refined that particular part is, like with the SketchUp or writing down your ideas. Always keep in mind that the more time you can spend on a particular um, part of, uh, I'm saying this kind of weird. So like, you know, I've been breaking, the, breaking this up. Like I am, I broke it down to like the concept of, writing down your ideas and stuff. The more ideas you write down, the more you can refine it. And then we moved over to uh, our top down and our 3D sketch. The more time you spend and reiterate in that area, the more refined that gets. Anytime you think you've spent enough time in a particular part of the, um, the process, you can always spend more time and reiterate. Now for this series, I've been going a little quick and this is just so that it doesn't feel like I'm constantly working on the same exact thing over and over and over. But I would recommend to you guys that you should iter reiterate as many things that you possibly can. Um, one thing that I have been doing is, you know, I'll think about this project as I'm at work and stuff. While I haven't done any changes or anything outside of what's on this stream, I have thought about it and I will go over some specific changes when we get to the prototyping, which we will go into actual forge today, which is, going to be fun. This is where the boring stuff starts happening, where it's actually making things and less le less talking overall. Um, I got a few good photos. Um, this is, seemed a bit busy. I don't know. Yeah, this is a bit too busy, but there's nothing I can get from this. So, but yeah, gathering reference art. Um, just you know, closure, you know, you know what theme you were going to be in because of the stuff that you wrote down from earlier, but you never, like, there was never this moment of going and looking at a bunch of art. You know, this is the, I usually like to put together a, a layout first and then gather reference art. I kind of do this back and forth between thing where it's like, I work off of reference photo or like my general shapes and the shapes can come from the theme that I plan on being in. Like, for example, um, if I put, when here, I'll pull it up real quick. Uh, where did I move it to though? That's the question. Cause I've rearranged my storage. Uh, did, that, um, did I delete them? Knowing me, I probably did. Um, I probably did, didn't I? All right, let me click on art. Maybe it's in here. Nope. But I do have this photo. So earlier when I was when we were when I was working off this photo, I knew it was gonna be a Japanese theme, but it doesn't necessarily mean it was gonna be this color and this particular exact architecture. But it kind of gave me a rough idea to find shapes inside of the theme I want. Then I worked on a layout, and I, I like doing that. Personally, so it keeps everything kind of uniform. If you, for me personally, like I like to start with a basic idea inside of the theme I want you, as a reference photo, make an entire layout based upon that reference photo with the shapes that we talked about. Then after that, I like to go and find art that fits the layout instead or the fits the layout better. So that's what we're doing right now is just kind of gra gathering reference fo photos for that particular layout. I, and these bridges are so cool though. That's a cool bridge. Where is that at actually? Oh, it's that one there. Um, kind of makes me wish I have a bridge on my map. T -t 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 Trying to see, let's scroll some more. Hmm. So when, let me actually pull up this photo again. So 
So I have some tall buildings, some walls, a little gazebo. And then, and um, yeah, I definitely would like to incorporate a bridge into the map for sure. Um, I have thought about a position where I could, and it could potentially work out. Did I save any reference photos with a bridge on it? Let's take a look. Um, no, just a lot of courtyards and buildings. So we'll definitely find a bridge that works just so that I have one to uh, reference back to and find if I can find a way to like incorporate it. There's definitely been a few that I like. Um, as I get farther down, things start getting, for me, not kind of fitting what I'm looking for. Ooh, might not be a good photo, but this is actually pretty, pretty close to something that I was thinking of, of a, like the courtyard. So like this particular stretch of land actually does he have other photos no so like this particular stretch of courtyards like this kind of garden-esque thing right here i kind of want to shove that into this part here where the tree is so imagine you have this rock this flower garden with a little rock path that comes across a little pond with rocks around it and some flowers and the tree kind of comes up out of the middle of the pond maybe on its own little island that could actually be pretty cool right there I'm going to save this photo, actually. Um, let's go ahead and save that one, because that one's actually kind of cool for um, the idea that I had for that particular spot there. And maybe what I could do is, depending on how big that court, yet, court is, actually, let me pull up the sketch. So depending on how big this court really is in the end, I could have that rock path, and then there could be all this water up there, but then there could be a little bridge over the rock path to the island that the tree sits on. So we'll we'll actually grab a bridge um, just for that reason. So I should open these in new tabs and not do that, what I've been doing, because it always scrolls to the top, I see. Oh, is that, that's all of them? No, -uh. it can't be. That's a lie. It is all of them. Is there not a page two? Okay. Well, let's scroll back up then. See if I missed anything. Um, and this is just from here. I'm, I would suggest that you guys can go, you should guys, you know, go on Google and go on any other art website that you guys know, go on Instagram, you know, things like that. Now this is this could be a pretty cool map actually. Like it you know, this is a different design altogether, but I actually kind of like this this photo here for like as a potential design, but I would incorporate going into the buildings and playing on top of the roofs potentially. Um so let's scroll down in some more. Let's scroll down some more. What's this? What did I save this for? So, oh, cool waterfall. That's what I saved it for. Let's find a cool bridge again. I think it was this bridge here that I liked from this photo. I like the pillars kind of thing. Yeah. I, I like this bridge. This photo actually ended up providing a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, we'll use this one. Where would I put one if I could? Oh, I don't know if I just missed that question. Um, if I could put a bridge, I, I'll say it again. So I was thinking about this rock garden path thing up here with the water and this sitting on a little island. I could see the rock path leading to a bridge that stretches over the water and connects to the island that this particular tree could sit on. Uh, do you think you'd be able to forge water in Infinite? I have not even the slightest clue. Um, my connections inside of 343, for some reason, I do not have any connection to the um, the forge department. So I actually have, I know nothing about forge whatsoever. 
I hope I hope we can do water stuff. I mean, it's really not too terribly difficult to be completely honest, but um for sure, I hope so. All right. So this is for all that submissions inside of this. Let's go back. So that was That was the actual model. Is it even possible? Is what even possible? Um, forging water? Oh yeah, I mean, I got, that's super easy. Like, uh, I mean, to I guess to kind of give an example how easy it really is actually. Um, I know I'm going off, but since it's related to Forge, I don't mind. We'll go to library. Um, so, let's see, water planes. It's possible in, um, in, in Halo 5, yeah, it's possible. Um, it's actually not too impossible, but basically all water is, is its own, it's just a texture. That's all it is. Um, now granted, you can make the texture move, you know, there is that, but in the end, water is just a texture that you apply to an object. So it's not terribly difficult to um, like make water for like Halo Infinite. In terms of making water in, water in Halo 5, um, I've done it before and I, I can do that. Yeah, I can definitely make water and it, it, it would be cool. But I mean, granted, if this was to move to a 4v4 map, that would be one of the first things to go would be water <laughs> because they can get uh, pretty expensive actually um, inside of Halo 5. Um, let's look at a few more reference pieces. Um, these are the actual drawings of not the the modeling some people did. See if anything pops out here that looks pretty cool. One thing I liked about my reference photo, and let me bring that back up, was how smooth the walls were. Like, when you think of Japanese, like, here's a big, plain white face, right? That is not a common thing inside of Japanese architecture. And let's just g click on something for an example. Like, here we go. Like, you know, there are a lot of wood and stuff like that all over it. Also, for the taller buildings, for how tall that is, um, they usually subdivide the floors and, you, and they always put like little roofs on it, kind of like this here. They always... You, you know, it's a row of windows, a roof line, a row of windows, roof line. And that's kind of like a very common thing inside of there. So when I saw that photo, I was quite interested to it by it because it was so different. Um, maybe I don't need any more reference art. Like, this might be just fine enough with what I got. Um, and then we might actually just go ahead and jump into Forge to, you know... I mean, I probably should just do a quick Google search, you know, just to say that we've we've checked as much stuff and has gathered as much uh, reference art. I actually really like this photo. I like architecture, or like architecturally speaking, I really like this photo. Like, I like the the feeling that it has. It's actually quite a unique building. Also, it's actually a pretty cool. Wouldn't be able to do something like this in Forge, but oh, he's got a lot of, okay. Nothing here that I think I can use, but it's definitely cool to look at and whatnot. So nothing in there, really. Let's go to Google. Uh, yeah. The thing about, the reason why I like ArtStation is you can kind of get a little bit more precise because it's you know it's art station it's people's art where this is can be quite generic you know this actually is actually a pretty good photo i like this actually actually a really good one this one 
actually my courtyard idea this would actually work better for i don't know why i clicked on this pinterest screw off no i don't want to be on here Meh. so i'm actually going to save that too so my courtyard that tree that i was talking about i actually could sit right in this path and would just have a little bridge go over from one part to this so that's actually a pretty good photo actually um Surprised that the first row of Google, I found something I liked. Um, that was the courtyards. Let's type in uh, nature. See if I can find any nature things because my map is mostly outside. So might be able to find some cool nature geometry kind of thing and kind of get some inspiration. They like the stepping stones is like a common thing also. Hmm. Maybe find some, like in Forge, we only have access to white, red. Well, do we actually have access to red? No, I've always made red trees. We have access to white trees and green trees. Depending on the tree's location, we can color the trees, but... I don't know what that will do to our frame rate. So, um, a lot of this is a bit much, a bit over the top. Nothing really there that I like. And then we'll just do architecture. I'm pretty sure I'll find something here. always do these these roofs are very expensive inside a forge but i have some cool ideas on how this can be done cheaply so there's that what in the world is that it's like a what in the world it's like maybe a plane goes in there who knows um -dum. Um, for, for time sensitivity, I think what I have is good enough. So, yeah, I think what I got is good enough. All right. So, you know, we have our layout now, or we have a layout to go off of. And we just grabbed a bunch of reference photos. We'll scroll through these really quick. So... This reference photo is more for just like building shapes and designs, maybe a little bit of atmosphere. It's a little bit cloudy for me. It'll be a, but um, what I like about this photo is actually kind of like the green tinge a little bit. I'm not sure if I'm going to go this route, but it is a cool color. And I like, you know, there's certain parts of the, like the walls here. There's a little bridge, you know, these little designs here. There's a lot of little things I like and about this photo. Nothing particular to my map exactly. I just like the photo. Um, this one, I just wanted a good interior space that I liked to kind of build for um, this other space right here. So if I, for in here, I was like, okay, what what would I like to see inside of here? And this photo here actually kind of, even though it's one floor, what I do like is I, I see these columns, these wood beams. There's a lot of wood, and then but it's it's wood on top of like brick, brick. So it's really layered. I like the the layers that it has, and that's one thing I want to bring to the map is a little bit more layers so that there's not so just like oh here's a concrete wall or here's a wood wall. It, this these type of combinations are really nice here, and I like the door. Um, the beams, the door, the walls, that's kind of what I like from this photo. This photo, I like, it's actually part of the same map. Um, I kind of like the lighting on this map, like the color wise, maybe a little bit less um, warmth or maybe just a few more clouds to kind of bring the tone down a little bit into the cooler range. I like the color of the wood. It's kind of like this brownish red. Oh God, my thingy. It fell. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. 
So I like a lot of the colors in this photo for the map. This one, again, was more, you know, it's, it's a cold photo, but the sun is providing some warmth, or maybe it's just this lantern that's providing warmth to this. Actually, that's what it is. It's a cold atmosphere with warm lanterns. And I, I like that also. Maybe that's a potential idea that, depending on what type of atmosphere I want, do I want a warm atmosphere or do I want a cold atmosphere? But it's, you know, it's, this is the correct time of the day in terms of sun angle. And same thing with the other one. I want this, you know, the steeper sun angle is in terms of whether it's colder or warmer, not 100% about. So I like having this photo as a potential option to explore. I like this one because it, it is cool but we can use these warm lanterns to kind of light up important things around the map. So I actually kind of like it for that inspiration. I also love the overgrowth vegetation kind of stuff that's like hanging off the roofs and the, this little architecture. I don't know what the name of this is, but I also like kind of the dinginess on the walls. The walls are also pretty plain, but with a little bit of detail on the bottom door frame. So th there's a lot of things I actually like in this one. It's got a courtyard, so I kind of can see how courtyard meets up against the house. They all tend to, s a lot of Japanese style houses don't sit flat on the ground. There's always a platform that it sends on, sits on, and then the platform has always kind of got this angled kind of thing. So if you look right here, it's, it's they're not per perfectly flat. They always kind of angle out. So that's good. And you can kind of see it here too. And so that's kind of always a good thing to remember is that these buildings always tend to sit on top of this type of stuff. I like the warmth of the original reference picture. Uh, this one here, I do too. One thing I liked about this one is one side is completely warm and the rest of it's cold. Yeah, this one here. Yeah, I like that it's warm on one side, cold on the other side. So. Or not, it's not cold, but it it looks cold. So even though it's warm, the sun on this one is actually, it's almost like coming from behind here. But it's not quite because this would be lit a little bit more. It's like coming in at this, it's coming in at this angle here, which allows to keep the rest of this space a little bit darker. So I do like this one for that lighting also. I'll definitely remember that. Um... This photo is just so I can see what objects are look. So we got, you know, good there. Wood trim along the bottom. Now in Forge, we can't do this faded to solid thing really easily. So we'll have to go something else on that. But again, angled pieces. So this one, uh, this one has a lot of layers. This one is wood on wood, it looks like, or wood on brick, or it's, it's, I don't know what that is. I can't tell if that's a wood column or not. Maybe those are supposed to be metal braces for support wise, but um, that, 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 that piece doesn't look like wood necessarily, but it's wood on wood. Um, I might be doing concrete on wood, but what I like seeing here is how to decorate the walls and not make them so plain potentially. So if I want to add more detail to the map, if I feel like it needs it, instead of these big plain walls, that will be some good reference to. Also, I actually really like this corner piece right here where it's this plain, 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 and then the, on the corner, it's got this really big, thick kind of amalgamation of stone rock. I really like that. Um, the lanterns, of course, are really cool. So um, the lantern here is actually pretty cool too. So courtyard, this whole water courtyard thing, that, that's pretty much, that fits right in this courtyard kind of thing here, right in here. Or, you know, depending, I could do it down here, but I feel like this down here is going to be more cliff based. Like there's actually going to be, like this is going to be open to the, to the sky here so this is more for the upper courtyard to have a bridge for the sake of having a bridge also more visual here so i think i think we're actually pretty good on our reference art from the original um reference art plus these new pieces here 
I think we're pretty good. Um, I spoke very vaguely on reiteration. I actually have thought about a few ideas and changes to the layout of this, this left side here. I'm not gonna do them in SketchUp to save time, but I do, I have reiterated on this design a few times inside of my head. Um, and when we go to prototype this map here in just a little bit, I'm actually going to do the changes while we're there. So now that I'm done collecting some reference arts, I'm just gonna talk again a little bit on reiteration. You know, it's not only is it good to reiterate as much as possible, do not be afraid to go backwards in your process also. Let's say, you know, I'm here in this particular phase, right? You know, it's no, no matter what phase of the design you're in, it is okay to go backwards to a previous phase that you've been, been in and refine that piece more so that maybe it gives you new inspiration going back to where you came from. I think, you know, if you just get stuck, if you, if you ever are stuck in your particular phase, like in a particular phase along the process of making a map, go backwards and reiterate on something that you've already done previously and maybe that will get you out of your funk on something that you're stuck on you know that's the easiest thing to happen when working on levels is you just get stuck on something like for example like i was stuck on how this all this left side interaction is you know and in my head i just you know went back to i was like okay what do i want from this map and luckily i came up with some ideas in my head while i was at work to kind of redo this section of the map I, I know I said I wasn't going to do much outside of the stream, but it just kind of happened naturally. Um, we'll go over those in just a, uh, a second. We'll actually go over them today, just as we, we'll go over them in Forge, actually. So I did revisit, you know, this entire section of the map right here, you know, everything that's highlighted here. And I, I think I came up with something that might work out pretty well, um, potentially, hopefully because that was something I was stuck on last week was that whole section there. So go backwards, write down some new ideas on paper or think about just deleting the whole thing and just forcing yourself to do something different in that corner. Look at some more concept art, you know, definitely looking at some of this art that we gathered today though is giving me some ideas for that side of the map already. Also um, some things that I liked. Uh, it came from that one photo that I did not save. Actually, it was on this map here. There was a the terrain path. I should have saved it, but I'm not going backward. We're going to move forward. Um, so, yeah, we're going to close that out. Uh, I don't want to make any changes. Um, we're not going to use Notepad today. Um, I have access to – I have multiple R monitors. Um so I'm just gonna put all these photos onto a different monitor. And we're gonna finally jump into Forge for the first time during this entire series. So what I'm gonna do is close that window down. And we're going to open up Forge. Let me switch this monitor around. Spring Arena 2019. Oh, and I guess to help plug something of mine, um, right now the ranked doubles playlist was re-updated. Um, just to make a quick reference to it, actually, before I um, uh, go any further, actually. I know this is like tooting my own horn a little bit, but I'm actually very proud with this because this is the first time ever a community member actually worked on a ranked playlist. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm quite proud of myself in that. So I'm going to toot my own horn just a tad bit. <laughs> but right now, um, there is a huge update to the 2v2 playlist. Um, and the, here it is on 343 Industries, doubles refresh. And I actually was a big uh, part of this particular playlist. And we I redid the weapons, the spawns, and made geometry changes to five of the disc maps. And I also have my own map in the, or they wanted to put my map into matchmaking again also, but this time all in the rank playlist. So I'm quite, I'm quite ecstatic. So 
If you have any problems with Coliseum, Eden, Molten, Plaza, Rig, or Hazard, I am more than happy to listen to the problems. Um, if it's all the, any of the other Forger maps, I did nothing on those. I had no help. Uh, th so those, th so three of the maps I had no say on whatsoever. They kept those from me until right up to the last minute. But all the default disc maps and hazard uh, were done by me. Um, were originally done by me and then was passed off to 343. So this is the first time a community member wor has worked on a ranked playlist, which I I feel pretty good on. So if you haven't played Halo recently and you want to see some new changes, go play 2v2. Some of the disc maps have received some pretty big changes. Did I not switch over as I was talking about that? Oh, fuck. <laughs> I didn't switch over. I switched over my monitor, but not, um, not the mo uh, not the stream. Here, I'll, I'll pull it up again real quick. There's an article on Waypoint about it. And I'll show I'll show off real quick because I'm proud. I really am. But it's like you know, as part of the 2019 season, we wanted to improve the experience for the doubles playlist. Uh, we would like to give a shout out to moi. Yes. Uh, who kickstarted many of the map specific changes and concepts so like i said coliseum eden molten plaza rig and hazard if you have any problems with them yell at me i would love to listen to any problems that you have with that cyberside these walls and veils you can talk to 343 or their individual map um map owners about it uh, if you hate the weapon timers you can complain to me also so but uh I hope you guys enjoy that playlist. I've been working on that with them for a couple months now, so I'm pretty I'm pretty stoked on it. And I, so far, it's been pretty positive reception, and I hope it continues that way. All right, so enough tooting my own horn. Let's make some map. Uh, let's do some prototyping. So the thing that I like to prototype first is generally I do the layout first, but I, I kind of do them both at the same time, really. Um, and I don't specifically pay attention to the canvas I'm on yet. Um, I think it's important that you get a quick idea out. It doesn't matter what the canvas on. It doesn't matter what the light is. Just make sure that you can forge what you say you can forge. And then make sure that the layout kind of fits what you're going for. Those are two very important um things when you're doing your prototyping because if you run into a, you need to figure out if you're going to run into a problem right now before you start forging your entire map um so do a full block out um if you don't know what a block out is it just means your map without art um and then i would also prototype the art too to make sure that you can actually make some of the things that you want to make so we're gonna do that we're gonna jump into that um, probably from here on out, uh, a lot of these sessions will probably get a little bit more boring because it's going to be actually forging. Um, but hopefully when we have extra people in here, you know, we can have open discussions while we're forging. Um, and I think that will help keep things um, interesting going forward. Uh, let's see. One thing I always forget is how to delete all items. I think it's at the bottom of here. Aha. Delete all unlocked. Yes. All right. So, um, I could. So, for those, um, you saw me pulling up a sketch up a few times. That's what I'm making right now is that sketch up um, with a few changes to the layout as I have thought about them. Um, so, if if you're watching this, that's what I'm doing. I have it pretty much memorized, so I'm not gonna go uh, too crazy on switching back and forth between the screens so that you guys can see it. If for some reason it becomes a problem and people wanna see what I'm actually copying over from, I can maybe do a window in window thing, maybe. So um, we're gonna start with that. Uh, one thing I like to, I have a special block that I kinda is close to my heart and it's the eight by 16 by 32. This is like my go-to block. So we're just gonna make the entire map out of this block. Um, I think originally when I sketched up, the building was like this 
big for some reason on my SketchUp, which is like totally wrong. So what I'm actually gonna do is that middle building in the SketchUp is by far, I think the most important piece of the entire, of like the entire thing. So I'm gonna uh, kind of start there and I get a general like foot plan going on. So, and I'm not really gonna care too hard on like which objects I use versus which ones not. This is not to get 100% accurate layout feedback. This is just to kind of make sure that things feel right, is done really quickly, something that you can run around in. That's Or at least that's why I do it this way, is I just want something to kind of run around really quickly. And that, you know, if you start off with basic things and build on top of it, generally speaking, I find you get uh, overall better results. You know, instead of going full ham right off the rip. You, if you go like full ham right off the rip, there's a good chance that you're gonna end up making something that you're not even gonna use. So why not just make something that you're not gonna use right off the start that's really simple and quick, and therefore you don't have to start all over. That That's my idea, so. All right, let's go ahead and grab these. We'll put these at the bottom. So I know I'm gonna have a door. So what I'll do for now is just pull these this way, pull these that way, and let's go ahead and do something like this and like this. So I kind of kind of have something going on like this, and this had a door going out to the bridge. All right, so. This probably is a, like, part of me thinks this might be a little big, but at the same time, once the ramps are in here, it probably actually isn't that bad. Um, so let's just go ahead and throw something in this corner. Uh, let's go ahead and throw this up here. And one of the things, um, and I actually generally like to write these down sometimes. So actually, let me... You guys actually won't see it, but I'm going to bring up my notepad again. And as I'm throwing these quick um, ideas down, I'm going to write things that I want to pay attention to. Um, and here, let me switch over to the other screen. So um, let's go back. So um, one thing is make sure you can't jump. Uh, well, actually, let's first say center building. Um, make sure you can't jump from mid floor to top floor, uh, top floor. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to end up writing a lot of things down. And what I'll do is once the list gets really long, I'll swap back and forth so that you guys can see what I wrote down. Roll down. <laughs> I can not be horsed. Um, and let me explain that real quick. So let me switch back over. So this is a first little gameplay thing that we're gonna actually talk about. So for example, in Halo 5, you have an insane jump height. Like the, the ability to do this is pretty nuts, right? So for me in 2v2, I like to limit the player on what they can do. Also, I think, like, because this is an outside path, right? If I'm able to come out, come through here and just jump straight up to here, I can get around the map way too quickly, in my, in my opinion. And basically, you're able to go from the lowest part of the map to the highest part of the map instantly. And... Therefore, one of the things that happens, and here I'll explain why I like this actually a little bit better right here. One of the things that pisses me off more than anything is when somebody uh, is up high and like this, like, okay, you're up high on the high bridge, right? And you shoot them down, right? So they drop down. 
but then they could just jump right back up, right? In, so in episode one, I talked about this thing called checks and balances, right? Well, one of the balances part is this. If I'm here fighting you and you're down there fighting me and you push me off this ledge, the person down low won, in my opinion, right? He won the fight. He got me off the power position. So if I fall off the power position, if I could just jump right back to it, then no, I, there's no advantage for the person down there. It's actually all advantage me because I can actually just abuse this back and forth. So one of the things I like to do is if there's a position up high and you fall off of it, you have to take the long way back to get to it. And that's too quick. Even that's too quick. So what I'm going to do is make sure that this mid door to that upper platform is a little bit harder to jump up to from here. I want the person when they come through this door to have to take this long roundabout route to get back up here. And the reason for that is, is this, if I'm down here fighting somebody all the way up there, like the, fighting somebody like, well, it's not gonna be quite that drastic, but if I'm down here fighting somebody up there and they drop down and have to go to the long way, what this allow will allow me to do is like, okay, I'm gonna go this way and come to here. And now we have a new fight that happens instead of him just being back up there all of a sudden. So if, if everybody's fighting for the upper bridge, when the person who's at a disadvantage clearly wins this fight, I want them to fight somewhere else. So this guy's gonna push here, maybe come this way. The guy from up here is gonna fall down and he's gonna come back this way. And boom, now we have a brand new fight. So when somebody falls off a top position in Halo, in my opinion, they should not be able to instantly get back to that position. I think that is very important and it's more important in 2v2s than it is in 4v4s. Um, but it's extremely important in 2v2. So we're gonna actually adjust this height real quick. Um, we're gonna actually, uh, for this, uh, we're gonna just go a little bit higher like this. And I'm going to bring this up like so and test that. So, so at this moment, can't make that. All right, now what if I do some glitches? Can I make it? All right, let's do, Oh, sorry, let's do some movement glitches. Oh, I have to, forgot, I can't do it unless it's super smooth. So let's, for cheating purposes, do this. Um, let's do that and then just raise this up slightly. Because when I make this, it's gonna be really smooth, but all right, one line, all right, there we go. All right, let's do a bum jump. All right, so I still can't reach that. How much lower can I put this? So even though I want this jump not to be possible, I also don't want this to be as high as it can. Like, I don't want this to be super high either. So I need to make sure that it's at like the right spot where I can't jump up to it, but it's at the lowest position it possibly can be in. So that's makeable only when you do the, um, the bum slide jump. If you do it without bum slide jump, you won't be able to make that. Um, it'd be impossible. Um, I like bum slide jumping, so I actually don't mind the fact that that could be made with bum bum jumping. Also, it puts them in the corner here, so that that's not too bad, I think. So, you know, eh, I'll put it back up there for now for uh, for sakes of you know, for uh, mental s sanity. And actually, I kind of need this to be a different size because what I'm gonna do is ramp behind it. So uh, primitive, simple, 16 by 16 by eight. And actually, I don't actually mind this probably being that high because um, this is gonna be a ramp back here. And this probably gonna more or less be there. All right. Oops. Let's use a better piece. Oh yeah. So. Um, 
Now this one's gonna be a little bit longer of a ramp actually. <laughs> I'm not necessarily trying to get like the exact scale of this room, more just like a general rough idea. Oh yeah, that's why I did that. Duh. Duh, Seth. That's gonna be, actually. Let's save some pieces and just do that and do that. You know, if you try, I'm of the mind that if you try to do everything exact right off the start, you'll end up screwing up. And the amount of time that you spend on trying to do something exact right off the start, you end up wasting a lot of effort. Where if you just do something kind of sloppy, um, it, you can get sloppy pretty close, and then you kind of know what to do after that. So I kind of like this shape a little bit. Um, I hate, so, okay, so this is something I want to write down, actually. Uh, top ramp, make sure you can't hide behind, uh, hide behind it. And I'll I'll, ref I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, so one, two. All right, so another thing that's kind of come up is this. So let me spawn uh, my Spartan here real quick. So this is gonna be my fake Spartan. Uh, let's make him blue. You know, he's the blue guy. So generally speaking, the a bl eight by four block by two is like a good indicator of what a Spartan is gonna be. And that is a big no-no. If somebody can hide in that corner right there and not be seen whatsoever, that's generally speaking a big no-no. That's a way too powerful of a, of a spot that somebody can hide in. So I actually want to make sure that that's not possible. So, what I could do is um, change the direction of that ramp. Because even if this is up high like this, you might be thinking, oh, but now he's higher. But the thing is, is he can't like totally hide up there also. So yeah, that's, that's, I think this probably be slightly better at the moment. So, and that's just to prevent somebody hiding in that corner. Now, what I also could have done is make the stairs, these like wood planks, like, like I guess probably better to forge it. Um, uh, uh, detail two by four by 12. So I could, I also could do the stairs as something like this. You know where they have the the gap kind of stuff i wouldn't do it with these pieces but i could do it where there's gaps in the stairs so that if somebody was hiding in that corner you can still see them kind of thing so that's a potential thing to remember but yeah i want to make sure that the person up here can't really hide you know so let's move this over to there and see what that so that's a bit dangerous a little bit so I need this, I probably will need this to come down the two feet. Um, let's bring it down four feet and see. That should be easily makeable jump, right? Yeah, I don't want that. I don't want that jump to be makeable. So let's bring it up two feet. Bring it down two feet. So, you know, that's a bit better. Um, so for now, I think let's put them in the corner and see what that looks like. So you could kind of, you will be able to kind of see his shoulders. Um, luckily, there's a wall to easily nade up there with, but I don't want that to be so easy. Or 
another thing actually right now aha here's a here's a good here's a good solution to this problem actually so um how th how wide this is this is an interior space so what i could do actually is delete four feet of this like this just move everything kind of four feet in make it a little bit thinner and that makes it very hard there we go that's more like it so let's for now i wonder could i actually just cheat and put this back up You know, because at this height, why is this not snapping? Uh, come on, snap. Okay. Well, let's do it that way. All right. All right. So, okay. It's going to have to be both. It can't be the max height that I want it to be. And, um,. That so it's gonna have to be this number here. Again, so yeah, that's another point of prototyping is that you're trying to find your gameplay falls at this point also. So that's gonna be a lot better um overall. Why does this not work? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, so we're gonna, sh do we, sh I shoved them in two feet, right? Or was it four feet? I shoved these in four feet. So let's move that in like that, let that in like that. Now, not every one has to be the same width. So what I might do is keep these, this actually. And keep this one big so cool all right so i got a general shape um i kind of don't want people jumping up that also but i'm not actually totally concerned about that one particularly um that one doesn't bother me that much because i mean it's not going to save you any time i could also just put a railing on the lower part here and leave railings off of these upper ones to kind of um, keep people from jumping to places that they're not supposed to go. All right, cool. All right, so ch check that top ramp. Make sure you can't hide behind it. Okay. Um, okay, where do I want to go from here? So I guess we'll cover one of those um, Reiteration things I was talking about. Um, let me just grab a weird piece right here. Um, and just kind of throw this down like that just to kind of clean up that corner. All right, so originally I had the door on the side here. I'm actually gonna think of, I'm probably gonna rotate the door to a different position. So originally on the SketchUp, the door was down here and you, you came up the hill through the door. I'm thinking about moving the door over to this side now and doing something like this. Um, and I'll explain some of my reasoning for it here in just a second. So let's do that there. So the big door Actually, that's a bit thick. Let's move that in like that. And move that down like that. I do want that door to be this wide though. So one of the things about the door being on this, on that side, is this gonna give me a lot more space to potentially work with but over here on this corner uh, in terms of spawns compared to the original one? Um, also, I don't have to worry about how um, the interaction is 
So if we go back temporarily to the SketchUp, so let me load up the SketchUp again real quick. Um, oh, I have to sketch up. So, come on, sketch up, load up, sketch up, please be nice to me. Open file, or don't be nice to me. Okay, there we go. And there, let me switch over. Uh, sure. All right, so with the door being on the side here, it was really hard to make something in this corner here that was particularly safe from this bridge, right? Also, it was becoming quite difficult on how to do this kind of like ridge here that could potentially jump up to a window here. So if this whole door just moves around, what I can do is develop this corner into a new piece of geometry that allows for like good spawns. So that was the, that's one of the iteration ideas that I was alluding to a bit earlier is this whole side I'm gonna kind of redesign. So now this door actually is gonna shift around. So let's go back to Forge. And let me switch my monitor here. So now when we're on this bridge, all right, you know, I have a lot less of a line of sight there, even on the part that goes out like this. Like, let me just go and put this here real quick because it belongs there. Oops, where did this one go? Yeah. Come on. All right. Okay, so yeah, as I'm, I'm on this door, on this platform here, there's, as I'm coming out this way, the, the door is gonna help block a lot of line of sights until I fully commit all the way around this way do I not get some sort of open sight. Also, what I can do is tweak the line of sight with physical doors. So what I could do is do like the Counter-Strike thing, you know? where there's one door kind of partially open. You know, I can mess with doors that are open and close. So it would be kind of like this here. You know, I can mess with things like this to kind of narrow that line of sight and make it a lot more focused. So this will be a much needed such a uh, Adaptation, and then what I can do now also is I was doing this like kind of weird like rock ridge over here. Well, now I can actually turn it into something a little bit more substantial in this corner, and then maybe use that as a way to jump up this way, like like so. So it'll give me a little bit more flexibility in this corner to make something. Uh, potentially more usable and we'll cover our maybe what in a little bit so and then we have the back building here um, let's go ahead and this had and then there was another one of these towers but smaller and I did this one as two of these uh, 3264 so it's actually bigger than 64. It's actually um, uh, 64 plus 8 plus 8. So 64 plus 16, 16. So it's like 72. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do the math right now, but it's like a lot more than a lot more than what I originally planned for. But that means this one probably can be just straight up 64 by 64. And actually be totally fine i wanted this one to be t uh shorter or smaller all around now oh, i gotta make a 
Got to make a doorway. Got to make a doorway. And I wanted another doorway on the bottom floor. So for now, let's go ahead with this, this, and this. Push these in four feet, like so. All right, cool. So I already feel that this f terrain piece here. Or I already kind of feel this is a little big, but if I plan on putting a tree out in the middle, this actually might be fine size. So I'm going to mess around with a few things here real quick. So let's, oh, of course. Let's uh, four eight. All right, and uh, in this room, it's gonna be kind of the same kind of windy stair set. To, I grabbed the wrong piece, of course. A dummy, actually this piece here. Again, I don't want people hiding in some stupid corner. I'm gonna do that. And I'm going to begin do the same thing by making it thinner, uh, 1530. Right, and this is easy before. Then one, two. And boom. Something simple, nothing too crazy in this room. All right. Now I did talk about potentially having another entrance into this room from over here. I'll explore that idea. Actually, Okay, let's just explore it now. Stop being lazy. <laughs> uh, let's see what a door. Oh, I would have to actually move the building, the entire building forward. If I wanted to do that. Oh, I went the wrong direction. I said forward. There we go. That would be forward. Actually, I should have kept it grouped so I can move it some more. Um. Yeah. 
let's just redo it again. Stop screwing up. And I also had a door over this way also. Looks like the whole thing needs to slide this way a lot too. This turned into this. Four, eight, twelve, sixteen. Ooh, where am I? At? Oh, okay. I can kind of. I think for now, leave it at that. Of course, this whole thing might be a bit long too, so let's just readjust this. Let's move this for eight. Oh, but then it starts blocking that doorway again. Hmm. Well, for now, this will be fine. So, I have a building here. I have this here. I have a building in the corner. I kind of want to do something. Um. The building over here potentially now this will be a mostly natural geometry geometry and I'll be putting a lot more variation in it so um, but right now this is kind of kind of large and kind of flat so let's write that down uh, top court yard and then number one, kind of large, kind of flat. All right, so I wrote that down. Okay, so, so let's bring this over here. Connect. Connect. Delete some pieces. Okay. This wall. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Right. I'm also using fairly thick blocks for these here. I could use a lot thinner ones too. Um, so I generally like the size of that room for some reason, but it kind of bloating up the rest of the map. Um, maybe the door is too big. And that's bloating up that side of 
Like maybe this door is still too large. Like maybe, you know, it's 32, I think. Come on, duplicate. That's 32. We'll cut some feet out of it. Let's cut eight feet. Uh, four, eight. That. Can't really swing. Oh, I can relocate this door though. Um, let's delete that and bring this in like that. Bring this out that but I can take this and bring that in hey blaze what's up man we just finished our little sketch up and we're kind of placing down a very very rough rough out <laughs> uh, eight by eight by six four by uh No, I've not played the TV2 playlist yet somehow. <laughs> You'd think I'd be the first one to jump on there, but I was not. I'm kind of, I'm kind of scared to play it. <laughs> it's kind of one of those things you, you spend so much time on something that you're like, okay, maybe I shouldn't look at it. All right, so that feels a little bit better. Not too much better, but at least it kind of gets more in line what I'm trying to do. Um, it, I'm actually quite happy that I moved the door to the side over here. Not much, just was about to go to bed and then saw you were streaming. Sweet, sweet. I'm glad I moved the door over here though, because this space feels very, very empty. And almost to the point like it feels so empty i almost want to move this door maybe even again like this time to the other side here like i could almost see doing that instead like to be honest i kind of like that more like it is strange that strange as that is um And this is why you prototype, guys. This is why I always say, pro like, you can you can jump into Forge and start making pretty stuff immediately, but you're gonna run into some problems, like just simple things like this, and not being able to quickly adjust things and not feel bad about it. Uh, it's a big deal. So I, this is why I speak for prototyping so much. Uh, even though that doesn't really change much for line of sights, it, I mean, it will once we add the doors in that are half closed or something like that. That just kind of makes this space feel a little bit better. Uh, maybe this door shouldn't be symmetrical to this room either. Um, and I could push the door a little bit more so I could bring this a bit farther this way. Um, it is very interesting. I could keep them close. But now I have a lot of dead space over here, but I'd much rather have dead space on this side because I can now like really play with a new new idea in this corner. No worries. I'm looking forward to playing so much. I haven't played much. Watched Vito play a bunch and his reaction were pretty positive. A couple other streamers that didn't know of that. Uh, that I didn't know that we're enjoying the new challenge of learning new stuff and appreciate it. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, that reminds me. Some I read something on the forum saying that there's no plasma pistol or there's no counter weapon to the overshield on um plasma uh plaza. Um is there like a sentinel beam at least? Or I, I can't, because I don't think I talked about the weapon layout at all. Uh, I because I was always saying that, you know, I don't know. I, I've read about it, so I'm not sure. Maybe they just never found it. <laughs> There's a storm rifle and a high. So there is a storm rifle. Yeah, then they just didn't find it. <laughs> they were just bad. <laughs> 
Um, cool, cool. That's awesome. Cause it got it kind of got me scared for a second when I read it. I was like, "Oh no, it slipped through." <laughs> I kind of want to move this again. This building has moved a lot. I should just keep it grouped, but no, I just don't do it. I actually want to pull it towards me. Uh, let's move it four, eight, twelve. So oh, that's so it was sixteen. Let's put it there. Let's. What's wait. This is 16, 16, so that's eight feet there. So let's not only do that, but let's now because oh yeah, I, have to, I just have to readjust this door, that's all. So, all right, so now you can come up this ramp and kind of zigzag through here. Uh, something definitely could have slipped. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Okay, you know, this door, I actually think I am going to relocate it. I'm going to relocate it to more closer to the corner over here. Um, I'm just going to relocate it eight feet. I think that will help a little bit more. And then, now I'm kind of excited about maybe redesigning this corner over here. So this could be actually a lot of fun. Um, one thing about Japanese houses, or at least a lot of the bigger buildings, they have these, um, they, they always have these multi-tiers to them. So I could see potentially de delving into that type of design the hard corners at the connection there at the ramp scare sort of scare me probably won't be an issue but it definitely makes me feel uncomfortable the hard corners at that connection there well which ramp <laughs> there's a lot of ramps are you talking about these right here the ones that you can't hide in <laughs> or are you talking about the ones inside of the building here. They all scare me too. That's why I changed this ramp. That's why I have a blue Spartan in the corner up there so that I can see, see if I can see the blue Spartan. <laughs> so I definitely know what you mean when it comes to corners. <laughs> you know, I tend to put these all over the place. Yes, yeah, the ones on the outside of the map. I'm guessing this one, this is this is a cliff. <laughs> this is a cliff. There there is nothing else that go. You fall off the map at this point. <laughs> so the one on the outside of the map. I'm gonna. So it's either this one or that one over there. So this is a this is a cliff here and this won't even go out that far it's going to be more like this here i guess i'll go ahead and start throwing that up there real quick because this is all outside here so let's delete that real quick i guess i'll pull up the sketch up so uh, should be already up so i just need to switch windows monitor So uh, I won't even switch. I can, I can do this like this. Yeah. So, oops. Here, this is hard to do like this. <laughs> All right. So yeah, it's a cliff. I plan on this all being outside over here. Definitely can use some love and some treatment. Uh, that's why we're doing prototyping now, so we can discuss these problems up front as I run into them but 
Yeah, there's not supposed to be much out here. Um, my prototypes are usually pretty ugly too. Um, there will be some like trees and natural geometry out here to kind of if you're down here versus the high bridge you'll get some cover for sure down here um and there's also a a, a bunker kind of not a bunker but um god what's the word i'm looking for there's something there's an overhang out here you sort of won't be able to interact until you push in through the door and the hard corner there in the door means I'd have to turn 90 degrees to the right to see if to see someone will have my back to the middle wall. All right. You sort of won't be able to interact until you push in through the door. And the hard corner where there in the door means you'd have to turn 90 to right to see someone while having the back to the middle wall. Oh, you're talking about, okay, I, I fight here, and then then I turn my back to the wall like this. And I'll wait a little bit, because I know there's a delay. I think this is what you're talking about here because this is the only time you have your back to the door the only other time you have the back to your door is when you come through here like this but if you come through i mean you you would know somebody's up here by the time you get here i mean when you're at the top and the building is to your right then the wall will be behind you okay so this is the other one you're talking about um for the most part i'm probably not too scared of that to be honest because you can't this bridge is actually really thin like you can't be up here and hide at all. So if I came up to this door and somebody's up there, I know you're up there. There's no way you can hide from me. This door, I'm I never actually this door is actually new and I don't even know if it's gonna stay because I've always been actually kinda on the fence about this door personally. So I, I'm I've I definitely can keep an eye on it or put it on the notes. Um let's go ahead and just add that to the notes. Uh uh outside ramp uh number one blaze is scared of turning back to wall to wall when going to the right building okay all right so we'll go ahead and add, add that in there the other option I thought about doing, which maybe with the changes that I've made to the courtyard at the moment, like this actually is less of a problem because originally this ramp here was actually meant to counter a position across the map um, from so that you can ca like punish people that were in that corner over there. But I don't think it's necessary as necessary anymore. Yeah, I mean, I look, I I. Hey, if it's a concern, it's a concern. It's always worth. It's one thing. If somebody has a concern, definitely write it down. And here I'll show. Since uh, since you're new in here, I'll show you one of the things that I do. Um, and uh, from there. So, so like at the moment, um, one of the things I do is I write down things as I come across them in my prototype. I physically write them down. I think if you're, as a level designer, if you don't write down the things you come come across, um, it's quite scary. So like, for example, it's like center building, I wrote like two main things down, top courtyard, I wrote this down. I kind of already solved this one, kinda, kinda solved. Um, so I, I write these down as I come across them myself also. So. 
and I haven't shown, I haven't brought that back up since I started. So it was a good idea to bring it back up. Um, I, with this being disappeared now, uh, like because what I plan on having is those, um, maybe some of those kind of, um, um, those Counter Strike style doors potentially where they're kind of open. Potentially, it would actually cut down on that line of sight a bit. Um, and with that being cut down, um, I actually would probably, maybe with this one, open this one enough where it could like cut, cut that corner like completely. I actually might be able to do that. Might be able to cut off a corner that way as the door comes from the middle. <laughs> um, I can adjust this line of sight a lot now um, with doors. So, I mean, I guess they, you would, like the Counter-Strike ones, they go in opposite directions. One's half open, what, like, but you get the idea. Like, I can adjust this line of sight a lot more now. So maybe this, there's a potential that this ramp could connect to the building. Like, so I'm gonna write that down, actually. So we're gonna write that down for sure. Um, where's my notepad? Okay, there we go. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> maybe connect outside ramp to building <laughs> all right so all right well i got that in there now but um now that let me switch back over for myself so yeah, so with these like Counter-Strike style doors, I can easily eat up some of the line of sight across here that I was originally scared of. Also, I planned on having maybe a tree in this courtyard, which would also cover some more of that stuff. So like, I kind of like the idea of like forcing people to turn left here so that like, it kind of like forces you to kind of look this way. So I still like that. So I could connect it here, but at the same time, I like this turn for some reason. For some reason, it just feels like I already have to turn my back to the rest of the map. So like forcing the person to go back in might be work, but I definitely would keep up the idea of turning that ramp in like that um, for sure. But I can I can always play with line of sights on this damn on this thing. I could do closed, half open, all sorts of stuff. But to me, I like using doors to get rid of corners. <laughs> like here's a door, it gets rid of that corner. Here's a door, get rid of that corner. <laughs> so Oh yeah, definitely keep it in the moment. So in the mind. Um, so yeah, and then there's this little awning here kind of thing. Um, one thing that I feel like I like on my SketchUp is I felt like the courtyard was lower, and I felt like this stair set out here was much larger. I kind of want to bring some of that back. So I know most of this is going to be terrain. What I could do for the sake of uh, um, for for fun's sake is just turn this like this and just lower. I could always angle this down. Uh, me too. It helps alleviate some snags when you put the doors in the corners. Yeah. <laughs> so there'll be a tree out here. There'll also be this kind of thing here that helps um, eat up some of the space down here and allow people to kind of sneak 
around a little bit out here. So go ahead and just put this thing that goes all the way across. And when I see the building from this side, that just seems so large. I'm I'm gonna have to rescale this building yet again. Um it's definitely too large. Or it's it's too large, but not by much. It's it's barely too large. So that's that's good at least. These are supposed to be angled, so let's go ahead and do that. Also, another thing with this here, like that, I <laughs> that's a big no-no. That is the biggest of no-nos. <laughs> so this would have to be done with such a much thinner object. But uh, let's just go ahead and find one. Uh, two by okay, this is detail two by four by sixteen. Oh no, two by eight by. Nah. Uh, 2 by 16 by here we go Meh. oops that's already over there now what I need to figure out is how to do this Actually, no, I got plenty of space. I think I spawned, yes I did. So one thing I want, is to test this window idea that I had. So, You'll be able to jump, you'll be able to get up to this, right? No, you'll be able to get up to it. From here, you'll get a window into the courtyard. That's cool. Is this please be one way? Hey, 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 can't see the lower courtyard with the window. Unless you do a jump stuff, then you can see it. But that's exactly what I wanted, which is, so if somebody spawns out here, uh, they can, and somebody's camping the courtyard, you can now um, come around this way and fight the courtyard, fight that little roof top thing, you know. Cool. That's exactly what I wanted. Need to get this bridge fixed. All right. So, all right. So, I definitely think middle building is a little big. All right. So, let's write that down on the notes. Three uh, center building, uh, buildings, slight uh, needs. Slight down scale. <laughs> All right, Blaze. Thanks for stopping in, man. I appreciate it. Today's been quite a slow day compared to the, all the other ones. That, uh, so, but thanks for stopping in. I really do appreciate it. Uh, it's got a long way to go. All right, so let's go ahead and put this down and do this here cool all right so now we get to mess with this corner here and redesign some stuff now 
Again, to me, this still feels, uh, before I go, Citadel Building's interior looks spot on. The outer wall, oh yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, the interior does seem very spot on. Um, I agree. It, it, it does come down to mostly object views. I, I agree. And thank you for reminding me that also. Um, it does need to be a little bit taller because there's supposed to be a basement route. So um, slight downscale or needs. I'll write needs thinner walls and needs to be taller. Because it, it also needs to be taller because I, I'm supposed to have a tunnel that goes underneath here. That will come, well, I don't know if, well, do I even need that tunnel anymore? Well, actually, I can repurpose the tunnel to come out on top over this way. So, yeah, I need it to be a little bit taller also, um, mostly on the bottom floor. Um, actually, let me write that. Diff, uh, thinner walls. Number four is basement. Uh, basement needs to be lowered for tunnel right. and I actually kind of like how small it is down here though sick looking forward to seeing it later man thanks Okay. Um So one thing I thought about because this roof is going to be playable because this particular roof is going to be playable is um, let's see what I could do is have it kind of curve like this a little bit now how do I how do I have this go past this door though that's going to be an, so this door presents a new problem but I could I could simply just go in the building and around the door so there's that option um, but the idea is I could have something in this corner now that's a bit more up like so and then I could jump across um, could it's giving me a lot of space to work with, for sure. Um, what we can do in the temporary time, uh, natural rocks, chunks. Which one's the foam finger again? That's eh, good enough. So I planned, originally this was gonna come out like this. And this is gonna come down and to the right, like so. So I'm wondering, now that this ramp no longer leads to a door, that it, it could be designed as a little bit more interesting, like natural geometry. 
So like get rid of this, get rid of this. Maybe bring this out like so. Maybe half that actually. Do that. And do that for the sake of I wonder if I could create like this kind of I usually don't like Z ramps, but like a part of me is wondering maybe a Z ramp would be pretty cool. Um Something like that. And I, I think I think my outside area is definitely not low enough. Like this should definitely be a little bit lower. And all of this should be a little bit lower. And this probably would actually give me that space that I need for um, um, for my basement. If I actually just lower all of this also. So. so I'm trying to think, like, okay, this would be a pretty cool fight. You know, maybe some curvy natural terrain kind of like this you know some sort of z path and then what i kind of want to do is have this to be kind of like maybe like a market kind of outdoor thing so what i would do potentially is like make a like a market like a look just like a little food stand of some sort like people outside of you know, so there'll be like a little stand over here. Maybe you can jump on the stand and through that stand, you would jump over to this building here and, you know, do do your thing. Um, and one of the cool things though, so far though, is I haven't added it in here yet, but you, this corner can't really be too campable to be completely honest. Um, because of the tunnel that's supposed to be here. Um, let's, for simplicity's sake, go ahead and put that in. Uh, oops. I don't want it straight across from here, to be honest. So we'll just duplicate that, put that there, duplicate that, put that over here. Do that too. We'll just, oops, lower that to that. Get rid of, actually, yeah, we'll just, for now. Actually, where's that line up to the building? Okay. So. Because one thing we're supposed to have on this map is a tunnel back here that works as a, oops, did I just duplicate something I didn't mean to? No, okay. As a lift, right? And you're going to be able to lift up, lift off, I mean, So you can come through this tunnel and then you'll lift and you can lift in up into this position here, which will allow you to come out and kind of shoot down onto this corner. Um, you could say that technically speaking, there's no real counter to this position, but I also think technically speaking, this position doesn't actually have power over anything. I guess like at this moment, it actually kind of sees down and through that door, which actually could be powerful so it might be one of those things where this whole thing has to shift in a way that it's no longer able to kind of 
I mean, it would have to shift a lot in order to do that. Um, let's do this. Let's put it right to the door. So there's that idea. Actually, another I <laughs> strange idea though is um go up. If you go up higher, you can't see. You can't actually see to the back there. You can only see into the room, which I kind of like that idea. So. So let's play with that. We can also play with it being over like that. coming up on two hours so i'll probably start wrapping this up i thought i was going to get to prototyping art also but uh i did not get to that so that could be something we do in the next uh next episode so now i could be farther out and not be seen from somebody standing on that ledge like the only time you're going to see somebody over here is when you actually come through the door so that that helps alleviate that a little bit but um we'll definitely um definitely have made a little bit of progress you know we at least now have something we could run around and kind of like start working on some ideas um on what we want to do game uh, more ideas of what we want to change for our gameplay um, let me write something I just thought of uh, back building in one incorporate the back building more into the game gameplay the map so you know this little prototype definitely has brought up some issues that we've uh that i've had and i've been writing them down and we'll go over those in just a second before we actually end this episode um you know we kind of i think one thing we could definitely do is find a little bit more ways to spice this corner one of the things that actually is quite pleasing though that by quite some accident is that even though this building is a little bit larger than what it's supposed to do be it's not getting much smaller by any stretch and the even when i stand over here on this far corner now let's put a blue spartan over here even when standing all the way over here on this ridge here it actually doesn't interact with the opposite corner too like too much you know like and that's only when you're on that exact corner which i think i'm i'm totally fine with that little bit of interaction but the cool thing is is you get this little awning to kind of play around with so surprisingly as dull as this corner is you know we can spice it up artistically speaking you know maybe with some pond little little pond with some koi fish in it or something like that but um you know gameplay wise it doesn't actually have to be too complex um you know maybe it's a bit boring for gameplay as it sits you know and because it's going to be all natural geometry we can definitely play with like how the angles are and whatnot it won't be this flat for sure um we could also experiment with the transition here a lot more now because we moved the door the moving of this door was like a, a pretty big savior to to this map in my opinion um it made this courtyard not feel so ho horribly large i guess is um the best way to think about it it's it doesn't feel horribly large anymore it could stay on this side um or the door can be switched to the other side of this here 
that's up for you know tweaking more and we'll when i when we work on this prototype some more we'll definitely fine tune some of that but um you know we have our garden courtyard we're gonna have here with flowers little maybe a little pond a big you know a tree in the middle then i like this idea of this out here being kind of like a food market kind of thing so we'll have these little tent awnings potentially and the point of the tent awnings is so that if you want you can actually come across and jump over to the building over here building's roof and kind of come through here and kind of now have some access to fight the wall and you also can get some you know a unique line of sight here the tree on the outside courtyard probably is going to cover that idea up um so there that's one thing for sure um there's not a lot here it's actually quite a small simple map um maybe there needs to be a little bit more subdivision so that you can't just fly around a little bit more right now everything's kind of straight 90 degrees um definitely can use a lot more curving but as this type of art style tends to really stick to 90 degrees you know japanese buildings um they tend to always be fairly square as we as we looked at our reference uh, art and we'll pull that up in just a second before we end this episode um there's also supposed to be a play space in here. Um, I might actually incorporate a way for that prisoner cubby to actually connect to an upper balcony inside of the building. So I'm gonna write that down too. Um, uh, maybe make a prisoner cubby, a cubby ramp to second ramp to second level so there's that idea too um it's funny because like some parts of the map feel overskilled but when you like use you know halo 5 spartan abilities and actually run around like it's not it, it's actually not that small and there's a lot of direct routes um, I kind of want to develop this side a bit more to be secluded to the rest of the map so that it's kind of like there's this side of the map and that side of the map to kind of allow for better spawns. So, you know, next episode, we're going to fine tune this prototype a little bit more, incorporate some of the things that I've written down, which I'll pull up in just a second. I actually like that that's actually a makeable jump that you can get to this outside awning like this. You kind of come around like this and then you can also look into the courtyard really really nicely like that um there's not much more i think should be done to this particular prototype at the moment um i think we might call this an episode you know i try i'm trying to keep these under two hours long so that when i upload them to youtube they're not like you know just forever amount of like like a forever long video so um i probably should go ahead and save this though save map as uh jap uh prototype um jap prototype uh, invalid entry this entry concerns contains a reserved entry or violates xbox live code i bet you can't use the word jap for some reason save map as uh, uh live prototype we'll just call it live i know it means twitch actually let's just write twitch twitch which uh pro uh, prototype all right it did not like me saying the word jap that's pretty nuts I, that's insane all right so i 
think nothing else to do in terms of what would be prototyping wise for this i mean we we got to prototype some art uh, art pieces you know right now we just have like a general layout that we can run around make sure any sort of gameplay things that we want to like tweak make sure that we do that um and then we got to make sure that the uh next week art gets uh start worked on i definitely want to incorporate this building so i think that's it for this let me go back to my other screen here. Let's go back to here and switch over. And let's do a little outro for some YouTube or some YouTubes. So today was mostly prototyping. We didn't really, and uh, finding concept art. So let's go over some of the art that we found that we like. Um, First off, you know, we have our original reference photo to the map. Uh, it's kind of, this is gonna be probably kind of hard to see on YouTube, but we'll just blow it up. So this is our original reference photo. We have the big building in the middle with the bridge here, a little building on the right and the on, like kind of the awning building here. The door originally was on the right. I didn't like how that functioned for gameplay. So we moved it completely. Um, so that was our layout reference photo. And then we have for art that we plan on doing is some reference photos here, you know, with how some of the wall designs are, maybe little structures like this potentially could get in implemented. Um, we've got some interior spaces, uh, some color ideas that I really like, um, more, you know, ideas on how to do the walls, the stairs, the little platforms some isolated views of that so um, this one i really like because it's already in the mountain and probably more towards the art style that i like a little bit more maybe it won't be wood it'll be concrete with wood on top where this is wood with wood on top ours might be concrete with wood on top um, some cool courtyard ideas um, a bridge just in case um, find a spot to incorporate the bridge because I really would like to incorporate a bridge somehow. So we'll definitely find a way to do that. Another courtyard idea. I really like the idea of the water around the island kind of thing. Um, we could definitely try and find a way to incorporate that. Um, yes, water is possible to do in Halo and not look super terrible, but depending on how our frame rate issues are going, you know, there's that to consider. And then, um, as we were um, doing our prototype, we wrote down a few ideas. Um, you know, for the center building, we want to make sure that you can't jump from mid floor to top floor. We check that off. Um, we also want to uh, make sure that the top ramp you can't hide behind it, and we just changed the angle of that to kind of help accomplish that. Um, but we always might tweak that more. Uh, center building needs thinner walls and basement needs to be a little bit lower for tunnel. So that's just for the center building. You know, our top courtyard uh, seemed kind of large and kind of flat. We kind of solved it by moving the door, um, but it still feels kind of large and kind of flat, but maybe once we get the, the flowers and all that stuff in there, it'll kind of take up the space. Um, outside ramp is a bit scary. Um, might be a non-issue, but Definitely something to keep in mind of as we continue to work on that prototype. Uh, things that I came up with is that back building on the rock wall. I want to incorporate that back building more into the gameplay. And one way we might do that is, let me pull up my, the sketch up for the map. Um, oops, uh, sketch up. All right. Um, what we might do is from this little you know tunnel or whatever this was supposed to be originally um whoops went into that so from this little play space we could find a way to go inside of the building and not and come out on a higher uh, come out on top of the roof here and not add a lot of a uh, lot of play space because the thing is with this being a 2v2 i don't want to add too much play space so we're going to look into adding something that connects from down here to up to this rooftop you know, maybe, you know, like a little patio type thing. Um, we moved the door, which I think was 
one of the bigger things we could have done for sure. Um, that's kind of everything we did. Um, next episode, we're going to continue to prototype, actually. Um, from here on out, the, ep the episodes are probably going to get a little more boring and longer in terms of, like, we're not going to cover a lot of new ideas. We're going to start refining stuff. Um, but we'll definitely talk about a lot of different things as we go through this. Um, one thing I need to keep in mind of when we go into next week is redesigning uh, how to continue to redesign this outside left side because we re, uh, did so many things out there. Um, so yeah, I want to say thank you to all who came in and watched the live show. I appreciate you guys coming. Uh, today was a little bit slower, but that's okay. You know, it was still a lot of fun. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube and have made it this far, uh, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoy the content, you know, please subscribe. I would. I would personally love it. Um, and with all that all being said, I will see you guys next Wednesday uh, for episode four where we continue to prototype and I will try and find some cool topics to talk about while we prototype. So thank you all for watching and I hope you all enjoyed the rest of your day. All right.